Williams from the corner. Oh, he can knock down threes, Kenny. Now he's going to go back door. Oh, what a feed. <laughs> feed to Ume, who goes up for the slam. Devin Lilly drives, pulls up, fires home a two. I'll tell you, man, you cannot underestimate the hustle this big man gives you. Strap in your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on. Welcome inside Dakota High School. Brad Fetters for Chippewa Valley Cable Television alongside Jeff Vitale. Getting you set tonight. Regional semifinals between the Gross Point North Northsmen and the Dakota Cougars. And Jeff, these two teams know each other quite well, having faced each other twice in Mac Red play. Both of those games went the way of Gross Point North. So Cougars looking to play the role of spoiler here tonight in the regional semifinals. Yeah, it's the old adage, Brad. It's hard to beat a team three times, but if there's a team that can do it, Gross Point North is. They're a very, very talented basketball team who plays about eight girls, all contribute. Dakota quite handily lost both games to them this season. Gonna need to be on their A-plus game today. You know, limit the mistakes. Uh, everyone on board's gonna have to have a big day. You know, they've been playing very well in district play so far. This is the time of year where you just tell your team, hey, go out there and let it rip. There's no tomorrow, and don't hold back. Dakota will be in their home white jerseys and start Gabby Brooks Foster, Gracie Maloney, Simone Andrews, India Reese, and Tambry Williams. As for Gross Point North, winners of 10 straight. They come into play tonight with an overall record of 21 and two. They start Mia Stefanoff, Jenna Winnewicki, and Natalie Babcock, Annabelle Aralt, and Sophia Borowski. As for the Dakota Cougars, they come in red hot as well, Jeff. Winners of four in a row, five of six. Well, the one thing you, you saw from last week when you know, we got to cover Chippewa Valley's district is the regular season doesn't mean anything. Chippewa Valley played Lance Cruz twice, lost twice during the regular season, beat them in overtime in the first round of the district. So th this is a game the Cougars can win. You just can't play sloppy doing it. You're going to have to beat this team playing be your best basketball. Tambry Williams in the circles. are going to square off with Borowski. And it'll be the Cougars that win the tap and control. They'll have the opening possession of this regional semifinal. The winner will play Cass Tech, who cruised to an easy 77-38 victory over Frazier earlier this evening. Yeah, boy, do they look good, huh? Fantastic. Terrific move to the inside. a -roll with the easy lay-in. Oh, that was, that was kind of big sis move, too. You could tell it might be a, that move might be a family trait because it looked just like her there, but nice answer by Simone. I'm just, I would just love to see these two teams just slug it out, give us the game we're hoping to see. Like the matchup, though. Did you see what they put on her? Look at that move by a -roll. And yeah, went with some size, put Tambry Williams in on her. Reese dumps it down low to Williams, kind of runs out of real estate, so he'll kick it right back out. Into the corner for Gabby Brooks Foster, tried to float one up, instead shovels a pass over to Tambry Williams. Good start for the Cougars. Gabby's been playing great basketball, especially last week in the districts. Team high score in one game. Um, you know, you're not a freshman anymore at this point in the season when you played over 20 games. Now you can see there getting to the basket. She got stripped. She didn't panic, stayed with it. She, she could be the X factor today. A roll rings it up from the corner. Can't leave her open. She's, she's the best player on the team by far. She's what they look for. How silky smooth is she? Unbelievable. Stepping off there and a nice job getting back on defense to knock that away. It's, you know, Simone's pass didn't have a ton of steam on that, and nice job of knocking out of bounds. Cougars keep possession, but this game is already off to a rocking start. 
Well, Gross Point North known their MO is defense. In fact, they only gave up 32 points per game this season. Well, the last two possessions, Gabby Brooks Foster has gotten in the lane on an assist and, a, and her own bucket here, and she's off to a hot start early in this ball game. Our terrific stats crew went back. How about this? Grosse Point North has only given up 50 points twice this season. 51 in their loss to Lake Fenton, and 50 in their 64-50 win over this Dakota squad. So the Cougars have the second highest point total against Gross Point North this year. Perhaps that's what gets them the edge here tonight. And the upset is India Reese with the steal and score. I, I, I think if you're the Cougars tonight, I mean, I'd be surprised if it gets in the 60s. I think you want that game in the low 40s, and I think you're going to be happy with it. I think you're in the game then, but I don't know if you want to get into a run and gun match, but I'm eight points right now in the first two and a half minutes, Brad. And Cougars looking to explode that 32 points per game that Gross Point North has given up this season. Trying to drive baseline, nothing there because of the defense of Andrews. Now we got to tie up in the lane. Ball's loose, and it's a steal for Dakota. Andrews quickly ahead, splits a couple defenders, floats one up. Oh. Blocking call, Andrews will shoot two. There's some energy in this gym early. If that basket would have fallen, this place would have exploded. My, my Apple Watch has already gone up twice for a loud environment, and I know it's not just listening to me. This gym's pretty, pretty rocking right now. It was kind of quiet during the Cast Tech game because they were up like 87 points. <laughs> Andrews knocks down the first. Yeah, it's not too often that you see a regional semifinal has a running clock, but the yeah. technicians were able to run all over the Ramblers in the earlier game. They might have, might have had to change their name to the running, running technicians the way they were playing. And lots of steals in that ball game. Cougars have come out red hot. They've doubled up the Norsemen here tonight. 10-5, the early lead. Three minutes gone by, opening quarter of play. Brad, this is the most aggressive Dakota team we've seen. Out. We haven't seen this all season from the Cougars. Andrews with the steal, steps through, can't hit. Borowski, Sophia comes down with a rebound. Aralt quickly up ahead. Knocks down Maloney, no call, no harm, no foul. They play on. Cougars with the defensive rebound. Andrews will slow things down, looks over at Phil McCune, her head coach. Dribbles right on top of that Cougar logo, is looking to dribble handoff there to Gabby Brooks Foster, who got back. Slowed the Norseman down just a little bit. Costly turnover for Dakota. Very rare you see a turnover on a handoff like that. It was just very sloppy in exchange. Winnowicki pull up jumper is good. These girls can all shoot. You really got to step out on these shooters. They can really hurt you. Four different Cougars have factored in the scoring here in the first. None of that. It's really surprised to see Dakota right now with 10. This team is really known for their defense. Maloney holds the ball high above her head. Now drives to her left-hand side. We're going to have a reach-in foul called. Yeah, a lot of reaching instead of moving your feet. Aralt, the guilty party there. Her first, team second. It's just amazing how Coach Bennett does it year after year after year. I mean, his teams are absolutely fantastic. Dangerous pass. Gabby Brooks Foster's floater short. And I got a piece of that. I think she lost it. Oh. All five starters back for legendary head coach Gary Bennett. Regional runners up a season ago. So right back to the regional semifinals go the Norsemen. Natalie Babcock supplies the screen for Aralt. Hoist can't hit. A little bit of an air ball as it sails out of bounds. I mean, she seemed to be in fairly good rhythm shooting that shot. Just might have been a tad deep. I don't know if the wind got that one here yet. Yeah, somebody might have opened up the door. Lee Ager checks in. Julia Lee Ager, the junior, checking in for Sophia Borowski, the senior. Gabby Brooks Foster from distance off the back heel. Tambry Williams comes down with the rebound. 15-footer is good. Rattles home, Simone Andrews. 
Looks like Tambry could be on pace again for one of her uh, 42 rebound nights. Unofficial stat, folks. Yeah, unof very unofficial. Simone Andrews, half of the Cougars' points. She leads them with six. Cougars in front, 12-7. Winnewicki now. Look at that defense being supplied by Andrews. Oh, Gabby Brooks Foster nearly had a takeaway. Mia Stefanoff dumps it down low. Kick it to the corner. Boy, oh boy, that might touch the baseline. A-Roll rings it up from deep. I was watching her warm up. She was canning everything from that exact spot. So she's already she's already hit two from there, and then she go about five feet to the left, and she missed it badly. So that's a spot where she was really hitting in pregame. We'll see if she continues it. Foster can't complete the drive, and now it bounces through her hands and out of bounds. A couple changes coming into the game for North. Eva Borowski and Sophia Borowski. Sophia the senior, Eva the freshman. No changes for the Cougars who stay with their starting five. Kind of get the feeling tonight's going to be a very short bench for head coach Phil McCune. You mentioned that to me prior to the start of tonight's game. Why is that, Jeff? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think in, this, in a game like this, you got to go with your horses. You know, you've had, you know, since, since Friday when you played your regional final or your district final, and you've had some days off, you've had a chance to get your legs. This is where you go for it. You know, this is where, as the teams start to kind of dwindle on who's left, when you're playing the best of the best in the state, you got to throw your best group at them. Now, I think I, my guess was about, they're going to go about maybe seven or eight deep today is, is, is what I think. Um, you know, just make, you know, obviously, especially with a young team like this, not a lot of them have been in this situation. No Tegan Malloy tonight has a cast on her hand. Brought up Camden Edwards, Joey Swaysinger, and Meadow Cameron from the JV to help the numbers. Brooks Foster, terrific dump to Tambry Williams. I think she was trying to get that to actually Simone Andrews, and it kind of lost out of her hands. It just fell right into Tambry, who drained the jumper. I like the coaching move, though, of putting your tallest girl on a roll their best shooter, trying to just get in her face a little bit to uh, to disturb, disturb her shooting rhythm. A little shovel shot, no good. Simone Andrews with the rebound. Now changes direction, goes behind the back, pulls up. Gabby Brooks Foster turned down the open look to throw it down low. Look out, G Gracie Maloney. Gabby Brooks Foster is having herself a game. She's finding open girls, she's making some plays. The freshman is off to a fantastic start for the Cougars. This looks like a completely different Dakota squad than the team we've seen throughout the regular season. Now look out, that's gonna go against Simone Andrews. Her hands are straight up, but she kind of went forward into her. She like moved into her. Obviously we don't have the benefit of a replay. That's what it looked like. The referee didn't even hesitate. So the, uh, the other officials in the stands thought otherwise. Well, now you're going to be seeing your first sub of the game for the Cougars, and it's going to be kind of forced into it. Yeah, Brooklyn. Oh, she's got two. You might just sit her for the last minute so she doesn't get her third. I, I, my guess is she'd come back out for the second and maybe put her on someone who's not going to be active as offensively to so not pick up fouls. That's what they do with A-Ralt. If you notice, A-Ralt is actually guarding Reese. So she, she's not guarding, you know, and, and, and India can score, don't get me wrong, but she's not a number one option. So you're not going to put a on on their best player. And, and I think you might have to do that with Simone, is put her on someone who's not as active offensively, maybe you can kind of keep the fouls down a little bit. Oh, that's not a good foul. That's Aralt's second. So top scoring threats for both teams now in foul trouble. Now well, here's the question though, Brad. Which team does it hurt the most? Well, based on the balance of scoring so far for Dakota, it's gotta hurt Gross Point North. Dangerous pass out of the reach there, of Natalie Babcock and out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, Gross Point North's offense, 80% of it goes through a roll. 
She's on the bench. Yeah, she's got nine of their 12 here in this what? first quarter. Look, oh. Baseball pass. I, I, they, they were sleeping, but I don't, Coach Phil doesn't like Coach McCune doesn't like that play, but I, I, I kind of do. Everyone was sleeping. If she hits Gracie Maloney, it's a layup. It was just about two inches over her fingertips. Dakota switching on screens. Terrific cut. A little underhand shot, no good. Winnewicki misses. India Reese flips one up. Oh, my! Oh, what a move! She was going to her left out of bounds and threw it up right-handed, and it didn't even touch the rim. Three seconds. Shot no good. What a quarter of basketball by the Dakota Cougars. They lead it 18-12. Let me, you mentioned the stat earlier, how many times? 50 points? Just twice. twice. They're on pace, not that it may hit that, but 72. What a first quarter by the Cougars. Simone Andrews leading the way with six. Now I'm sure I'm sure Coach McCune is saying, you know, if you remember in the MAC tournament, they got off to a hot start in the first quarter against Ford, and then the offense kind of fizzled a little bit. So I'm sure Coach McCune right now is really stressing in the huddle the importance of intensity on offense and keeping that, because really it's been their defense that's ignited their offense. Yeah, multiple steals by Gabby Brooks Foster. Simone Andrews has played terrific defense. Of course, the defensive efforts of India Reese and Tambury Williams, two of your lockdown defenders and top rebounders. Aralt leading the way, obviously, for Gross Point North with nine. A lot of the Cast Tech fans that were here, too, uh, have stayed to watch the game, obviously, to see who they play next. A regional final will take place a couple nights from now right here at Dakota. Sophia Borowski to inbound. Aral back into the game. Simone Andrews back into the game, both with two fouls. When you look who Simone's guarding now, that's a little bit of a change. Aral picks up her dribble, fires a quick pass to the outside to Babcock. Stefanoff will try to drive to her left, went down to a knee, and she blew a bit of a tire. Aral now, very patient offensive set for Gross Point North as they can't seem to get anything going. Three on the way, Aral, too strong, long rebound. Into the hands there of Gia Rizzo. Rizzo, just a freshman. Simone Andrews hoists and hits. Oh, you, you're gonna let her get going. That might be a mistake. When Simone Andrews gets going, this team goes to a next level. You don't, and she's got eight already, early. Starting to cook. Aral jab step. What a move. Good a switch there defensively. It's a turnover. The travel, Gia Rizzo with the switch. It might have got her with a push up there. She extended that arm. Ooh, dangerous pass caught by Rizzo. Tried to go over to Williams. Now we got a tie up. Possession arrow stays with Dakota. Yeah, good job there on the tie up, recognizing you still have the arrow. They, they, a little pass is a little behind Tambry. If they might have led her a little bit, she had the lane probably for an easy bunny. We'll see how long it keeps India Reese on the bench too. India had a fantastic first quarter. Forcing Rizzo to tuck in her jersey a little bit more. I don't know. Appears to be okay now. Quickly gets it into Simone Andrews. Yo-Yo with the basketball in her left hand, now switches over. Crosses over, good clean block there by North. Possession kept alive by Gracie Maloney. Gracie is always hustling, getting those garbage rebounds, picking up those loose balls. That's her, that's her game, that's what she does. Maloney calls for it at the elbow. Starts the attack, now kicks it to the outside. Three on its way is good! Brooklyn Garvalia switching numbers on us. <laughs> Goes from three to 24. Now a step back three, no good long. Simone Andrews there. Gross Point North right now searching for answers. This is this is this is a situation now you really haven't seen them in all season. 
Two losses on the season. As that shot sails wide. Yeah, that was definitely not in rhythm. No foul call there. Norse losses this year, an 18-point loss back on December 14th to Lake Fenton. Their lone league loss this season on January 19th, 47-46 to the Eisenhower Eagles. Yeah, and, on, and, and Eisenhower's had some games this year where you just looked at them and go, wow. So, I mean, and they, you know, it's tough to get through that red division unscathed. That's why we talked about in the boys how great Gross Point South was this year. You know, even to be 9-1 and one is absolutely outstanding in this division with the talent in here. Maloney lays it up, lays it in. The Dakota Cougars can't do nothing wrong right now, Brad. Two and a half minutes in, they have a 13-point lead. Coach Bennett needs a timeout to talk things over. All Cougars all the time. 25, 12, 5, 28 left to go in the first half. We've always said that sportsmanship is the golden rule in action, but why should stop when the game is over? Now more than ever, we need to respect each other and treat each other with common decency, not only between the lines, but outside the lines in our daily lives. In sports and in life, nothing beats good sportsmanship. A message from the Michigan High School Athletic Association promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Well, I don't think Coach McEwen could have even imagined this kind of a start. Right now, you just got to, you know, don't watch the scoreboard now. You just got to keep playing every possession. It's about a possession right now. It's not about two, three possessions from now. It's about the current possession. How about this? A 7-0 start to the second quarter for the Cougars as they've held Gross Point North to zero points through nearly three minutes of action. And now we got somebody and thrown out throwing this somebody game. out. A Gross Point North fan has been ejected. <laughs> oh, athletic director Shane Finney is uh, asked to come over, and uh, someone is going to have to leave. And, and the official, when the official kicks you out, you can't plead your case. You're either going to leave under your own power or uh, Macomb Township's finest is going to escort you out. Here's the problem, Brad. You're at a basketball game. Yeah, it's just regionals. Adults be adults. You know, we didn't know what was said down there, but the refs are in charge. I mean, we, we had a situation at Chippewa Valley this year where an official cleared out a whole section of fans, which I have never heard in 27 years of coaching. Never. So back to action now. Maloney banks it home. Well, we said, you know, not only the star is going to have to come out, but everyone's going to need to contribute. Gracie Maloney with six. Brooklyn Guard Valley hit it's a big three. Brooke, Gabby has played fantastic. Like, they are getting help from everybody on the floor right now. Everybody's doing their part. 15 point lead for the Cougars. A 9 0 run now for Dakota. Borowski into a double team. They kick it back out. Good nice ball fake. fake. And now travel. Oh, they're going to call a foul on the floor. Oh, boy. I thought Borowski for sure traveled. Co Coach McEwen doesn't like that call, but Coach McEwen won't argue very much. He just plays on. You know, foul's only 4-3 to three right now. 5-3 now. Nothing, nothing major. Continue to play your game. Tambry Williams has played great defense on Arrow. That pass sails through the hands. Coach McEwen got Stephen drilled off. on the sideline there. He took that one for the team. Sure did. It doesn't hurt when you're up 15. No, it didn't get it very high up on the body. Coach McEwen's 6'10", so. Wow. The it would have hurt a more common man than Coach McEwen, that's for sure. I went down, for sure. I went down. Uh, Coach McEwen being a mountain of the man that he is. Carvalho at a trigger. Finds Tambry Williams to kick it outside. Cougars now, oh, 
Dangerous play there as Rizzo is able to get the pass over to Andrews. Pull up, jumper, no good. Tap back, out, controlled by Dakota. Fighting for that loose ball, and finally Sofia Borowski will come down with it. 3.50 left to go, second quarter of play. Yeah, stepping off. Brooks Foster and Reese Law, nice pick and roll. And can't finish at the net, Sofia Borowski. Well, Brooks Foster and Endia Reese getting ready to check back in here for the Cougars. He's gotten some good minutes out of uh, Brooklyn Garvalia. And Gia Rizzo. And Gia Rizzo. Oh. Andrews slow to get up. Aralt trying to take advantage of numbers here. Slices her way through the lane. Can't hit. One and done as Tambry Williams wipes down the rebound. Garvalia, some fancy ball work now between the circles. And Gross Point North was five on four there, Brad. Didn't get that great of a shot. It was a runner. And Tambry Williams unable to catch cleanly through some traffic. Five starters back on the floor now for Dakota. 3.07 to go. And you've got Gross Point North right now at 12 points. They haven't scored in the second quarter. 12 points. Over You're a five-minute drought now without scoring. Oh, my. That's, that's amazing. With the offensive firepower this team has. A-roll. Tambry's just all over. Look at that defense. Gabby Brooks Foster with the near steal. Jeff, these two teams, we talked about it. They hooked up twice this season. Gross Point North beat them twice. 64-50 on this floor. We were here for that game. 63-33 back on January 17th in Gross Point. A 30-point victory for Gross Point North. You think the Cougars thought about that game at all this week? Yeah, my, my guess is that score was up in the locker room. Saved there by India Reese. Gets right back up and joins the fold. Just a, well, you a can't. pull up jumper off the back heel. Williams with the rebound. 23rd uh, rebound for Tambry. All these one and dones right now for Gross Point North. Yeah, the defense of the Cougars right now has been outstanding. And a timeout called by Coach McCune. Yeah, Coach McCune saw, saw the Cougars struggling there a little bit offensively, just wanted to get them to kind of catch your breath a little bit. This is kind of, there was quite a bit of action here in this quarter too without a stoppage. So, you know, Tambry looked a little winded, so I think maybe even a timeout too to kind of get a little bit of a rest. The path to get here for Dakota, a 55-34 victory over Lance Cruz North and a 40-39 victory in the district championship game over the Anchor Bay Tars. An As incredibly game, Anchor Bay. They played fantastic. As for Gross Point North in the district semifinals, they beat their rivals Gross Point South 48-23 before beating up on Lakeview in that district's championship game 46 to 21. So looking at the road to this regional semifinal, Gross Point North in their two games have only given up 22 points per game. Right now the Cougars have 27. We still have two minutes left in the first half. Well just the intensity defensively has really helped Dakota get out to this lead. I, I don't, you know, in the two games with Gross Point North, they haven't shown this kind of fight. And we even mentioned it, I mentioned it earlier, we, have, we haven't seen this kind of intensity from Dakota. And you're, you're in regional play. It's win or go home. I mean, and, and sometimes teams just go to the next level. Gross Point North right now looks a little tight. Looks I'll, a little frazzled. I'll take it a step further. They beat a very good Utica 4-2 team, Gross Point North that is, 36-28 in the MAC Red-White yep, crossover tournament championship game. To hold 4-2 to 28 points is doing a lot of good on the defensive end. Yeah, I mean, that's outstanding. We saw how good they were. Simone Andrews playing with those two fouls. Gross Point North, nothing going right right now. No, they're, no, they're just they're struggling to find the basket right now. It's been all Cougars defensively. No, no look is easy. Even the, even the easy looks aren't going in. Here comes the late double team. Oh, you got to get it over the timeline. Trap. Oh, good heads up play by Andrews to knock it off the leg. A yeah. Wager over on that far sideline. She's such a smart ball player. Someone's got to come over and help her, though. You know when someone's chasing her, 
Whoever left, whoever left you, you got to go help. Gabby Brooks Foster going to slow things down now. Minute 40 left to go in the second quarter. Careless dribble off her foot and out of bounds. Well, she hasn't made many mistakes for that tonight, though. You know, the way she's played has helped them get in this lead. So get back and play some defense. Six and a half minutes of this quarter with not scoring a point. That's insane. Aralt, good cut. And can't finish at the net. Boy, oh boy, frustration setting in right now for Gross Point North. That was a terrific offensive set, and they just could not finish. Crossover by Andrews. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, she's got 10. They're up 17. Everything going right for the Cougars right now. Coach Phil might get her out for the last minute so she doesn't pick up her third. Simone Andrews. The new school record holder for points in a game. Triple try on the corner. Hits the side of the backboard. Still doesn't fall, and it's Andrews that comes down with the defensive rebound. Under a minute, coast to coast, glides in, can't finish. A Ralt rips it down, and now we got a foul called against Dakota. Just the team fifth. 29 to 12. And the Cougars have just looked absolutely magnificent this quarter, and really Gross Point North really trying to find something. A-Rolf comes out two for the last 44 seconds here, so this might even be even tougher to try to get back into this game. Coach Bennett might just be looking to try to make some adjustments at halftime. There's still a lot of basketball left. Sure, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but what a start to this game for the Cougars. They are really frazzled right now. Looking for anything. They got Eva Borowski in there, the freshman. Winnewicki drives through the lane. Shot falls short. Winnewicki will go to the line to shoot two. Tambry second. Just cannot get anything to go down right now for the Norsemen. And I'm sure a lot of the Gross Point North fans who are just looking to see this team put the ball in the basket at such a fast level are just flabbergasted with how this first half has gone. Another miss. They are absolutely snake bit right now. It's not too often you see a varsity oh. team. And what do we got? Got a foul. They're going to call a foul. Gabby Brooks Foster, very aggressive drive to the hoop there. Kind of put the ball on her hip on that drive. Yeah, she put a nice stop and go um, on Stefanoff, and she just had to grab and got to the bucket here. A couple big free throws here could put Dakota up 19. <laughs> 30 to 12 in the first half, Brad, with 15 seconds to go. I I'm sp speechless. It's kind of been the storyline all season long. I mean, I, I don't think we're overselling this in the least bit. This is a Gross Point North team. It is the fifth ranked team in the state of Michigan. And playing through contact and getting the bucket to go, Eva Borowski. First bucket of the second quarter as the Cougars end up outscoring the Norsemen 12 to two in the second quarter and open up a 16 point lead as we head into the halftime intermission. Well, you know, as we get in the second half, you know, they're gonna continue to press. So I, obviously Coach, uh, Coach McCune is gonna talk about the press, breaking the press, getting your head up down the floor, looking and making plays, getting the basket and I mean, you know, they can, but boy, the way they play defense in that first half, you know, it may drop off a little bit, but you got to keep up the defense. That's what's got you here. We'll see if the Cougars continue to put the pedal to the metal. They lead it 30 14. We'll take a quick break here on Chippewa Valley Cable Television. These are some facts about youth marijuana use from the National Institute on Drug Abuse and the Centers for Disease Control. The potency of marijuana has increased significantly over the years, making it a more addictive drug. One in six teens that use marijuana regularly can become addicted to it. Marijuana use can damage the developing teen brain, creating problems with learning, memory, attention, 
problem solving, and other functioning. Youth marijuana use is associated with many negative consequences, including poor school performance and school dropout, injury and death from car crashes, mental health issues, and less life satisfaction. For more information on youth marijuana use, visit drugabuse.gov and cdc.gov. Welcome back to Dakota High School. Brad Fetters with Jeff Hotelli. And Jeff, what a start to this game. A terrific first half of play by our Dakota Cougars as they lead 30-14 regional semifinals. Yeah, insane start. Now we'll see that, you know, we got to keep the intensity now for the second half. If you had time to settle down, you got to keep it up because this Gross Point team can get going in a hurry. Dakota in their home whites. Gross Point North in their road greens. And a quick fine, good half court set there, Natalie Babcock. Yeah, she's hand checking her the whole way. You can't do that, only in the NBA. I'm gonna get Natalie Babcock, that's her first. A lot of players complain about that foul, but it's a, it's a rule. You can't you gotta move your feet, you can't play with your hands. Coach Gary Bennett using his entire 10 minute halftime break to talk things over. The Norsemen did not have a shoot around coming out of the halftime locker room. Near steal and it will be a steal. Williams quickly ahead, can't finger roll at home. Gets her own rebound. Kept alive by Maloney, picks up the dribble. We'll go over to Gabby Brooks Foster. India Reese slices and dices, can't get it to fall. And Stefanoff, it comes down with a rebound. Sophia Baralski leaves it. Baseline drive, Winnewicki. Two quick points, two quick baskets right off the bat for Gross Point North. The lead down to 12, 30 to 18. Tambry Williams leaves it for Andrews, goes up strong with the left. Low punch, counter punch to start this third quarter. Winnowicki, Maloney steps in between that pass. Borowski pulls up, fires oh. a pass, and then a steal by the Cougars. Brooks Foster, between the rings. Surveys the defense. So I got Aralt out on her now. Andrews, steal by Aralt. Two on none, Aralt. Lays it up, lays it in. Yeah, a couple of silly turnovers right now. I've kind of got Gross Point North back in this game a little bit. Brooks Foster traveled. Got a jump stop. Coach McEwen, Co yeah. yeah, he's gonna call a timeout here and settle him down. Real quick 62 run to start the uh, third quarter. Probably a good idea. New for the 2022-23 school year is a totally redesigned MHSA website. The address is the same, just go to mhsaa.com for all your news, scores, schedules, and more. The new site works great on mobile devices and makes tournament information even easier to find. Plus, get all the future stories and finals recaps right on the front page. Check out the new mhsaa.com. So 6-2 run now for the Norsemen to start this third quarter, and they will have the basketball coming out of this timeout. Message sent at halftime, message received so far for Gross Point North. Yeah, I mean, they took up every second they could in that halftime, making some adjustments, just kind of settling down. They were really kind of out of sorts in that first half. And they've already got to the basket a bunch of times. There's another one. <laughs> Aralt again, she has a game high 13 points, 13 of gross points, 22. 
You know, in the first half, she was, she was shooting a lot from deep, not getting the basket much. She's got two layups right now to start the second half. Maloney draws a triple team, passes out of it. Andrews wide open from three, no good. Took a weird hop on the floor there, you see that? Sure did, kind of spun right back to Borowski. Aralt. Jump shot no good, India Reese comes down with it. Reese got to slow down, no numbers. Instead she attacks the basket, got fouled. She went rim to rim there. She did, she got, a, she got ahead of the other two Norsemen and uh, just decided to go one on one in the basket and a reaching foul. She get a chance for two free throws. <laughs> Shame on me thinking she needed a way for some trailing teammates. Yeah, I don't need no help. Yeah, of course not. Make that Fetters guy look like a fool. <laughs> Calmly sinks the first one. Officials talking things over now. Not quite sure what that discussion's about. One more coming up for Reese at the line. Reese makes good on both. The lead swells back up to a dozen. Two big free throws right there. Stepping off, back to Aralt. Holds the ball and will now go to her left hand side. A little head fake there out of Aralt. Yeah, a little zone look here for the Cougars. Kick it back to the outside. Aralt catches, shoots. Maloney rips it down. Now it's tied up. Good battle for it. And it's Borowski, Eva Borowski, the freshman. What a play, not just to rip it away but to make the basket at the same time. Gabby Brooks Foster has it stolen. Norseman Faithful making some noise. They're starting to realize their team's right back in this game. Well, that's definitely a gr different gross point team than we see in the first half. So they've come out with a little bit of fire. Uh, I'm sure you know, Coach Bennett giving one of those uh, legendary halftime speeches and the Cougars got to find a way to match its intensity as the Norsemen have quickly got the lead down to 10. Winnowicki allowed to check in. A little bit of a late sub. Andrews dribbling it off her knee. Oh, they're going to save the Cougars ball. Oh, boy. Bit of a break there for Dakota. Yeah, I think she just lost it there. And well, where he was angled at, it looks like he might have out, got knocked out of bounds, but it looks like she just lost it. Even the uh, body language of Simone Andrews indicated she knew she dribbled that off of herself. And now Tambry Williams going through the Gross Point North player to come down with that rebound. It's going to get called for the foul. Wow, I thought that would have been on Borowski. It's going to be on Tambry. Yep. Might have shoved it over the, the back. Yep, yep. Three That's and a half good. minutes to go in this third quarter. Cougars in a 2 3 zone right now. Maybe trying to take that drive away, Brad? Norseman swinging around the perimeter, looking to feed it down in the post. Aralt changes their mind, kicks it over to the right wing. Now they finally dump it down. Right back out, Aral going to begin to operate now, go strong to her left, tried to scoop and score. And it's the Cougars now with numbers. Garvalia just threw one up. We'll go to the charity line to shoot two. That's a nice job by Brooklyn. A lot of people are saying, pass it up, pass it up. Gross Point North defender was baiting her. No one stopped her, keep going to the basket. Now she's going to get two free throws. Second on Winnewicki. Carvalho knocked down the triple back in the second quarter. That's a very smart play by the young freshman. She's going to be a good one. They got a couple of them on this team. When you look at this Dakota roster, next season you'll lose 
Alexis Oltersdorf. And you lose India Reese. Those are the only two seniors on this entire roster. Cross court pass into the hands of Winnewick. He drives baseline, hangs and hits. Well, the Norseman's starting to heat up a little bit offensively. The Cougars just got to keep making them chase. North has outscored Dakota 12 6 in this third quarter. Garvalio over to Andrews. She goes up with the floater. Got harmed and will shoot two. Fouls starting to pile up just a bit too for Gross Point North, all the way up to four team fouls. That's what happens when we start attacking the basket. Yeah, and the, the Cougars have continued to do that. And they're making the free throws. Calm, cool, and collected is Simone Andrews. Dakota, perfect eight of eight from the line here tonight. Almost gave the announcer jinx. <laughs> Avoided it that time, nine to nine, lead back up to 12. That's kind of been in the spot in this third quarter. 38, 26, 210 left to go in the third. a roll for three from the corner, off the back heel. And Dakota ball. And that's what you want to do if you're the Cougars, just have them continue to chase you. Tremendous box out by India Reese. Really good, that's why she got that possession for Dakota, because she had to knock that out over her back. Good box out. Oh, good defense there. Now Andrews with her pocket picked. Babcock couldn't bring it down, and now foul in the backcourt. Good sportsmanship there by Sophia Borowski. Yeah, I didn't even hesitate either. That, that's what you can tell the character of a kid. She came right over, helped her up. It was a hard foul. Hey, dude, we're, we're, playing, we're playing right now. This is for a regional finals burst, so everyone understands that. It's just a good, hard play. Play on. Andrews looks over at her head coach, gets the signal. Begins to go now, oh boy. Very high dribble because the contact came from the defender. She was able to dribble that basketball. Well, that was weird, okay. It's not the weirdest thing we've seen today, but they're getting up there. Here's the thing, Brad, they're two fouls away from getting Dakota in the bonus. And with the way they've shot free throws in a double digit lead, not a good sign for Gross Point North. Yeah, Dakota with only one team foul. Nice pass. Sophia Borowski. Dakota's definitely not rotating like they were in the first half. And uh, Gross Point Norris really started to cash in on that. Williams keeps the possession alive. And now a battle for look oh, out. Williams nice in there everywhere. late. They're going to call a foul, I think. Yep, she jumped. Tamri jumped in on her. That's her fourth. That's gonna change this game. L little bit of a careless foul. Yeah, very, well, that was, yeah, that's not a little bit, that's a lot. Especially when you have three. And, and actually, a great job by the official spotting that. She came in late, and, and she came in over the top. And, and pounced and, on her. Yes. Yep, that's an and automatic the, the, foul. The tie-up was there, Tambry yep. Williams trying to keep the play alive, yeah. but at that point, there was nothing to be gained from and, what she did, so she has to take a seat. Yep presumably for the foreseeable future. And now with her out, it's open season right now for Gross Point North attacking the basket. This, so, this is where Simone's gonna have to take over. Well, so many of these first half plays were one and done. So many of these offensive possessions for Gross Point were one and done because of the rebound prowess of Tambry Williams. You take her off the floor, where is Dakota gonna come up with boards? Yeah. A much smaller lineup out there now with three guards. Garvalia for three, no good. Gracie Maloney kept it alive, took a spill out of bounds. Last touch by Gross Point North. Well, that would have been a big shot if it went down. Nice hustle though, as always, by Gracie Maloney here. Maloney does all the little things, doesn't she? She oh. gets down and dirty, she sets those screens, keeps plays alive, comes down with the offensive rebounds. Really kind of that glue player. She's the X factor, without a doubt. Brooks Foster tried to explore the lane. Look at that ball, it took a funny bounce. Gabby Brooks Foster tries to drive. Offensive foul. Well, they've really stepped up the defense in this quarter. 
16 to eight. This is gonna be a big defensive stop here. Kind of shocked, especially right now with the Cougars being short. Maybe not trying to go back to that zone and not giving up a layup here right before the quarter to not make it a six point game here. Got the defender up in the air. Aralt can't cash it in. India Reese. And a buzzer will sound. 38-30, three quarters in the books. The wheels on the Cougar bus starting to wobble just a bit. Jeff, can they hold on here with one quarter to play in this regional semifinal? Well, you know, the Norsemen definitely got their footing back in that quarter, making now an eight-point game. Now, now a few of the Cougars, it's just about quality possessions. A lot of turnovers in that quarter. Gross Point North starting to feast. They got to the basket quite a bit. You gotta find a way to slow that down. Cougars end up with eight points in the quarter. Just one field goal. Six points coming via free throws. So not the quarter the Cougars had in anticipated coming out of the halftime break. Keep up with everything MHSA on social media. Look us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube for tournament updates, event announcements, video highlights, and high school sports news from around the state. It's the best way to connect with the MHSAA every day. I see you with uh, the Twitter, or is that the Facebook fingers going there, Jeff? Uh, I'm actually, uh, I've been on the phone with uh, Brooklyn Garvalio's dad, just getting some updates there in Florida, so I told him I'd try to send him some scores the best I could, but yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say savvy, but I'm, I'm proficient, let's just put it that way. So here we go, one quarter left to go in this regional semifinal. The victor will take on the Cast Tech Technicians who won easily over the Frazier Ramblers in our first semifinal and one. Well, they got Maloney now on a -Rolt, and they went in against Andrews in the post there. Borowski hits the, the basket. That's gonna be her third. More importantly, a chance to cut it to five. Remember, they were down 16 at halftime. Sophia Borowski, the senior, finishes off the three-point play. 38-33, 7.35 left to go in the fourth and another Cougar turnover. Well, you are seeing why they're the number five team in the state. Only behind West Bloomfield, Rockford, Flint, Carmen Ainsworth, and Detroit Renaissance. a -roll with 17. Lead down to three, one possession ball game. Well, she's got it going right now, and uh, you look in the stands, you see Big Sister in the Michigan State Spartan basketball t-shirt, and she's fired up. Proud of little sister there taking it going right now. Norseman got it back down to three. They, listen, since halftime, the one thing they didn't do in the first half was really get the ball to the basket. They missed a ton of shots. In the second half, they got the ball to the basket and they made a ton of shots. And the Cougars, turnovers, turnovers, mistakes, mistakes, dribbling through double teams. And then that's, how you, that's why you've seen this league dwindle. Back to the drawing board for Dakota here and head coach Phil McCune. I mean, that de the defensive intensity in the first half was amazing. The second half has not matched the first half defensive intensity for the Cougars. And we talked about that magic number of 50. You look up at the big board, Dakota with 38 with seven minutes to go, 721. Can they reach 50 points now after scoring 30 in the first half? You gotta watch it, that, that double team comes from the backside. India Reese is forcing it. Tambry Williams back in the game with four personal fouls. Sophia Borowski cut off along the baseline. We'll dump it back off to Stevenoff. Now they got Tambry on their point guard who's really not active offensively, so she doesn't get fouls. 
Arolt explores, 15-footer on its way is good. Canned by Sofia Borowski. Yeah, she's, she's been outstanding late in this game. She's got it going, and uh, the Norsemen are on fire. Tie up at midcourt, possession arrow, Dakota. Yeah, Borowski, seven points in the second half. And a quick 7-0 start to this fourth now for Gross Point North. And they got this down to one, all the way from 16 right now. The Cougars have just got to settle down now, and get some good possessions and some good shots. They're just forcing a lot that they don't really need to force. Andrews drives, pulls up, no good. What a rebound, Tambry Williams. Yeah, that's what they missed when she was out. So this one thing she can't do right now, defensively, is foul. Post, turnaround jumper, no good. Williams rips it down. India Reese slows things down, picks up the dribble, hands off to Andrews. Trap came the double team. A lot of active hands, man. Those, they get their hands on that basketball and deflect it everywhere. And I think Gabby Brooks is going to bring India over, just kind of talk to her about, you know, where do they keep dribbling the ball to? Yeah. Corners, Brad. Stay out of the corner. Keep baby out of the corner. So Dakota goes to this smaller lineup of the three guards, Garvalia, Brooks Foster, and Simone Andrews. Ill-advised pass, but Maloney kept the drive alive. And then Garvalia had her shot blocked. Gabby Brooks Foster will pull it out. No need to rush things now. Five and a half minutes left in regulation. Cougars up three. Brooks Foster cut off along the baseline, turns it over. Good defense. And she's Outlet pass sails out of bounds. It's kind of a tick for tack turnover right there. Cougars kind of rushing through these half court sets just a bit. Slow it down, get a good offensive possession right now. A little pick and roll there. That pass was supposed to go to Maloney. Instead, Williams catches. Maloney tried to hoist up a shot. Instead, draws a double oh. team. And Tambury Williams tried to shoot that before catching. Found herself wide open underneath the basket. Rushed it. And the Cougars need to slow down a little bit. Yeah, everything's moving about a million miles per hour right now. And the Norsemen have sped this game up. I mean, that's, that's you know, and that's what they've done now has got the Cougars to play you know, a little faster than they're comfortable. You gotta watch that double team coming. Gonna go right into it. Too easy. Natalie Babcock. That's a six team <laughs> foul. <laughs> this game's almost got a state finals feel to it especially after watching that first game, that 39-point blowout. Assistant coach Jim Champine didn't quite agree with that no, call, did he? No, he, he almost looked like Tom Izzo there for a second. <laughs> kind of jumping up and down. And Gracie's got a huge size advantage on her. They've got to get her the ball. Maloney, and there's the seventh team foul. So Maloney will go to the line to shoot one and one. As we mentioned, Cougars a perfect nine for nine at the free throw line here tonight. Big freebies coming up here for the junior, Gracie Maloney. Maloney, six points in the first half. Nothing so far here in the second. Well, nothing's been easy inside this half for the Cougars. The, the Norsemen have just clamped down the middle and, uh, you know, got to find a way to crack it here. Maybe the free throw line's the way. Maloney's first is good, earns the second. 10 for 10 for the Cougars. They've been outstanding for the street. You take those 10 free throws away, and this game's off Girls Point North right now. Can't make the second. Split at the line, lead to two, 41-39. Oh. I don't know if I like Tambry Garden a out there, because one more foul, she's gone. You can't lose her. Three in the lead, bang. 
Winnewicki. North's been a battle back from 16 down, have taken a one point lead, 42, 41, 4, 10 left to go in the fourth. She didn't even hesitate on that either. Andrew splits a couple defenders. 16 now for Simone Andrews. Well, here we go right now, the two Mac Red heavyweights right now slugging it out. Win a wiki, she's starting to feel it, drives to her left, no look pass. Kick it around the perimeter. All right, gonna slow things down. Hand off to Borowski, Sophia Borowski. Gonna try to explore the right hand side, forced to pick up her dribble. Winnewicki nearly lost it. Gets the screen. Good defense now being displayed by Dakota. Gabby Brooks Foster went for the steal, comes up empty. Borowski nearly had it stripped. Wraparound pass. Unkind roll there for the Norsemen. Oh, oh they're gonna oh, fifth foul. no! No! Tambry Williams is gonna get called. And oh, she did not make contact. He actually called it on Gabby Brooks Foster. That's a huge. And on the floor. Oh boy. So Tambry Williams avoids picking up oh. her fifth, and now North throws it out of bounds. Costly turnover. And that last possession, here's something that we didn't really talk about. Gracie Maloney locked down a -Rol. Couldn't, wouldn't let her get the ball. She didn't touch that ball that entire possession. The Cougars, they came away with nothing. Now Dakota with the ball with 313 to go. Chance to extend this lead a little bit. Girls Point North takes the timeout. They have three left. Dakota just two. It's almost like, it's almost like Rocky II. You got Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa in the middle just throwing haymakers in the 15th round, trying to <laughs> knock the other one out. Dakota came out swinging, big lead at the half, and the Norsemen have just systematically worked their way back into this game. You know, Winnewicki, when she came at three, didn't even hesitate. Caught it, launch, good. Gross point, or Dakota comes right back down, picks the lead up, and they're just swinging right now for defenses. Yo, McCune. <laughs> What has Phil McCune got in his bag of tricks here to finish out this fourth quarter? Dakota with the basketball up 43-42, 3.13 left to go. Taking care of the basketball, but also when you get a rebound, you gotta be heads up, pressure's coming from everywhere. You gotta find somebody open and get down the floor. You hold on to the basketball, you're getting double teamed and probably stripped. This Girls Point North team, perennial powers, winning a state championship back in 2008. Made it to a regional championship game a year ago, looking to make it back this season. Dakota trying to play the role of spoilers here on their home floor. A little easier than what the Dakota the Cougars have thought about with the press. Oh. Maloney rolls oh. to the basket. <laughs> and it's gonna be a roll. Ah, that looked like a pretty clean block. That gives her her third, though. So she's been pretty clean. She got those two quick ones. Looked like a great block. And assistant coach Jim Champ again, not as animated as the first one, though. Too bad we couldn't have had a camera on that. That was fantastic. Maloney missed the short. Two fifty-nine left to go in the fourth. Buckle up, folks. We are in store for a wild ride as we try to wrap up regulation here in this regional semifinal. Maloney, empty trip down the floor. Aralt. Gonna explore that right hand side. Threw one up, no good. Contact made. Gonna call a foul. And they're gonna call a foul on North. Sophia Borowski. Eva Borowski, 24. They get, did it, oh, was it 24? I thought she said 2-4. 40 42, up on the board. 42, right? Sophia Borowski. It looked like she, yeah. Uh, the, 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 I think they're trying to get, we don't have, okay, there we go. 42, okay. So Tambry Williams to the line. She is yet to shoot free throws. That patented wipe of the sneakers before firing home the free throw, too strong. Doesn't earn a second. And all of a sudden, 
Dakota has missed their last four free throws. So difficult to close out basketball games. Well, the one thing right now, too, when A-Rod gives the ball up, you can't let her get it back now. you got to really lock her down and don't let her get the ball back. Make them run the offense through somebody else. Winnewicki, dangerous from all over the floor. Comes out to Borowski, holds the ball above her head. Now pulls Back up, door, finds nice. A-Rod. Oh, what a feed. Oh, what a dish. <laughs> Natalie Babcock. <laughs> Unselfish play there by Aralt. Tambry Williams, no look pass to Maloney. Now Gabby Brooks Foster reaches in. Just the team sixth. And that'll be her third. Well, we're bonus basketball the rest of the way. The Norse for now have got this down to 154 to go. They have a one point lead now, and now it's the Cougars. Kind of had the shoe on the other foot right now. And if you got a foul, don't let Tambry foul. <laughs> Working around a screen. Borowski curls, tried to dump it. That ball actually hit off the backboard, maybe even the rim. Well, Annabelle cut back door, she was open. The ball just hit the rim and Cougars with a chance to take this lead back. Gabby Brooks Foster running the point now. Simone Andrews, the off guard. Garvalia nearly had the ball stripped. Float the pass over to Maloney. Might have telegraphed it just a bit. That's gotta be a fake and go back door when they're that aggressive defensively. Yeah, Babcock jumped that route. Nearly came away with the steal. Gotta get this ball into Simone's hand and let her just run the offense. There we go, she will run the point now. She's got a size advantage of stepping off on her. You can get someone to double team and drop it off to somebody. Well, now go. Gets the screen from Maloney. Can't hit. Tambry Williams with the offensive rebound and stick back. 40 second rebound tonight, Brad. Unofficial. Under a minute to go. A roll. Holy cow. And Gross Point North down a point 45 44. Winnowicki picks up the dribble. Aral being guarded by Williams. Hoist can't hit. Long rebound comes all the way out to midcourt. Simone Andrews with the reach in foul. Oh no. Her fourth. You got a one on one now. That call's been consistent all night. It's going to be Babcock and Coach McCune. Going to take one of his two remaining timeouts. 45, 44, 39.8 seconds remaining. Seventh team foul. More importantly, the fourth on Simone Andrews. So Andrews and Williams both with four personal fouls. Um, Aral and Borowski with three. Are the only ones in trouble for the. Uh Norrisman. Let me get this out of the way, Jeff. The broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and Chippewa Valley Cable Television. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution, other descriptions, or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the MHSAA and Chippewa Valley Cable Television. Well, these are the moments you live for. You're in the driveway practicing free throws with the game on the line here. You got to box out if you're the Cougars. One and one for Babcock. First is no good. Maloney had it, lost it. They go to the floor. Oh, and we're going to get a on foul call. Point North. And that's going to be two shots, Brad. All right, let's put the reverse jinx on Gracie Maloney. Let's put the reverse well, the announcer jinx. The Cougars have missed jinx. four in a row from the free throw line. Maloney's missed three in a row, so let's reverse curse All this. All right, come on, Gracie. And now Gary Bennett <laughs> will use one of his three 
Remaining timeouts. Now, if, if we rewind the tape, I think I said earlier, if this was in the low to mid 40s, Coach McCune would take it. Now, I don't think we expected that at halftime when the score was 30 to 14. But nonetheless, Brad, here we are with 37.6 seconds to go, and it is 45 44. Just saying. A very large free throw is looming. Oh, the big, maybe the biggest free throw of the season? To say the least. It gives you just a little bit more breathing room. A one point lead feels like a razor's edge right now for the Cougars. A two point lead, albeit doesn't feel a lot larger, but it has to feel a little bit more comfortable than a one point lead. Yeah, big free throw. A little high five there from Tambry. India Reese back in. Just so Gabby doesn't get her uh, her fifth. We'll let the crowd tell you whether or not this goes in. How about that? Short. Whoa! <laughs> A-roll. Big defensive possession right here. That was 4-3. Blocked. It was. Now the Cougars just have to hold. Tambry Williams passes out of it. India Reese up ahead to Garvalia. And wow. Aralt is going to get called for the foul on India Reese. That's Aralt's fourth. Two shots coming up now for India Reese. She is a perfect two for two. Now, the biggest thing right now, including the free throws, is you got to play good defense. Just nothing easy. Aral tried a three there. Tambry got a block. We got the rebound. It, it, it just got it. You got to play defense right now. That's what's got you here. Big free throw. Knocks it down. Reese stops the six straight. Misses at the line. Second. No good. A Ralt comes down with the rebound. Up ahead. Look at this pass. Win a wiki wide open. Tie game. Simone Andrews quickly to the front court. Looks up at the big board. And a timeout called by Coach McCune. <laughs> 6.9 seconds remaining. What, what, what a surgeon. She's coming flat off the floor. You're thinking she's going to shoot it and just fires a dime across the floor for a layup. Ties the ball game up. Wow. That is Dakota's last timeout. So if they cannot get this basketball in, they do not have the timeout to bail them out. Well, you know, any kind of a foul puts the Cougars on the line for two. Both teams in the bonus. You, you want to get a shot off, you would think it's got to go in the hands of, of, of Simone, but you could also maybe look at like an inbounds lob play to Tamri under the basket, uh, something you could use. And don't even forget Gracie Maloney floating around there. Um, you know, she's got some point blank looks tonight. No better time to hit one than right here. It'll be interesting to see who triggers the basketball. A lot of times you look at who's triggering the basketball because that's the player who the ball is going to eventually find. Yeah, and, and usually it's been India Reese passing that ball in, and she's knocked down some big shots today, too. So it's, we'll see what happens here. So, you know, and not to mention, don't forget how good of a defensive team this Gross Point North is. They had 30 points at the half, and I'm sure at halftime, Coach Bennett lit into them. And they've only given up 16 so far in the second half. Garvalia will trigger from in front of the scorer's <laughs> table. Andrews and Gabby Brooks Foster. Garvalia having Gotta a tough time oh getting boy. it in. Goes to Gracie Maloney, plenty of time. They dump it down low, bounces around. They gotta get up a shot. a -Roll will hoist, it's good if it goes. It falls short, and well, well, well. Bonus basketball. Overtime to decide this regional semifinal. 32 minutes wasn't enough. They'll put four minutes up on the big board. Tied at 46 a piece. Well, and if you, you know, a lot of Cast Tech people are still here. 
I think if I think if you're them right now, you're hoping for six, seven overtimes, and uh, just watching them drag their tongues for uh, for Thursday. So, what a game! What a game! Gross Point North eventually outscores Dakota 16 to eight in that fourth frame. We mentioned battle from 16 points down to now force overtime. Also need to make mention, Cougars in a bit of foul trouble. Only yeah. have seven team fouls here in the second half. But Simone Andrews and Tambury Williams both have four personal fouls. They have just. Yep. And Gabby Brooks Froster yep. has three here. They just don't have enough wiggle room in terms of fouls. And Aral has four. So. so here we go, overtime. Tambry Williams to take the jump ball. Sophia Borowski will go for Gross Point North. It's Williams, Gabby Brooks Foster, Simone Andrews, India Reese, and Gracie Maloney, the five on the floor. The starting five for head coach Phil McCune to start this overtime. Maloney catches, swings it over to Gabby Brooks Foster. A little crossover dribble. A little pick and roll there by Tambury Williams. Nothing available to her. Got a mismatch in the block. They're not getting her the ball. Stefanoff, India Reese for three, long. Tambury Williams, what an offensive rebound! Yeah, they switched on it and had Stefanov on her, which is a huge size mismatch. She got the offensive rebound, her 44th of the ninth, put it back in. Borowski over to A-Roll. Nice pick and roll. Good gather and finish by Borowski. Dakota struggled on that in the second half. 48, 48, three minutes yeah. left to go in OT. Aral demands so much attention, you forget about the roller. Reese comes around on a curl, being guarded by Aral. Simone Andrews sets the screen. They turn it down, cross court pass. Gabby Brooks Foster from the parking lot, air ball. That's not a good shot, not in this type of game with the way the second half's gone. And you're eight, nine feet behind the line, not a good shot. Girls Point North is only led in this basketball game once. A Rawl, little jab what step, a hesitation, what a move. Little shake and bake, misses, comes down with her own rebound, tries to force it back up. Instead of the three on the way for Girls Point North, no good. India Reese pulls it down. Reese quickly to the front court, Euro steps. Couldn't get it to fall. Gabby Brooks Foster, the smallest player on the floor, comes down with the offensive rebound, attacks. Little floater, no good. Simone Andrews with the intercept. Two minutes left to go in OT. Works her way in, pull up jumper, no good. Fatigue perhaps starting to set in. a -Rault. dump off. Working through contact, Babcock. Oh, they passed the ball so nice. Back and forth. Minute 35 left to go in OT. Norseman in front, 50-48. Now reach and fall. <laughs> Coach Bennett, Coach Bennett just can't believe it. That's gonna give Brooks Foster two shots, and that's Borowski's four. So, the two big studs for Gross Point North with four. The two big ones for Dakota with four. Minute 30 to go. Wow. Boy, they were, they were 10 for 11 at one point, and they're really, the free throw shooting just kind of gone off the charts right now for the Cougars. Gabby Brooks Foster really takes her time at the line. Misses both. Tambry Williams can't finish. India Reese trying to defend A-Ralt. 75 seconds remaining. 
Yeah, you're Girls point to north out. with two point lead. You can't sit back, no shot clock. Only seven team fouls for Dakota. So it's only gonna be a one and one on the next foul and Maloney didn't wrap her up. And now Maloney makes a foul and Gross Point North's not gonna be real happy with that high foul. Well, gonna be a one on one. It's gonna put Winnewicki at the line. 0 for two is Winnewicki. In and out, but an offensive rebound for Gross Point North. And now Aralt will be fouled, and she will go to the line to shoot a one and one. Jeff, what did we say was the magic number tonight? 50. What do the Cougars have? 48. Aralt, kind roll off the front iron. 51-48. Aralt misses the second. Williams wipes it down. Cougars down three, 45 seconds left. Don't need a three. Trying to go with a pick and roll. Simone Andrews picks up her dribble. Fires it down low, Tambry Williams keeping the play alive. She gotta come up and foul. India Reese, gotta foul, gotta foul. Well, Tambry can't foul. <laughs> Only one timeout for Coach McEwen. <laughs> Annabelle Aralt, two for four from the line. Split the last time. This is a two shot foul now. Oh, here's a big box out right here. Simone Andrews might have gotten away with a lane violation. I don't know if she <laughs> stepped, stepped in too soon or not, but. Aralt knocks down the second, 52-50, 20 seconds left. Andrews looks over at her head coach. This ball's got to be in Simone's hand, Brad. She's going to try the left-hand side. India Reese goes up to start. Oh, rolls home. India Reese, the biggest bucket of the night. A-roll streaks down the left-hand side. Steps around the defender. Oh! It goes! Annabelle A-roll with the game winner. Wow, unbelievable, bank three. Julia Aralt has sent the Gross Point North Norseman to the regional finals. An absolutely stunning turn of events. A buzzer beater in front of her visitor's bench. Aralt hands it from distance. And Gross Point North comes in and wins this regional semifinal 55 to 52. An absolutely incredible basketball game that comes down to the final possession, comes down to the final shot, and Annabelle Aralt knocks it down, beating the buzzer, and gives the Norsemen a trip to the regional finals to take on Gas Tech. Down 16 at the half, you know, Gross Point North just didn't fluster, fought their way back, fought their way back, Ends up getting the game into overtime, and then Annabelle Aralt with the three-pointer at the buzzer off the window sends the Cougars home. Whoa, what a tough way to lose. So that will wrap things up 
for the Dakota Cougars as they fall to 14 and 11. Heartbreaking fashion here tonight. As you mentioned, we're up 16 at halftime. Can't close this one out. Force overtime and Gross Point North comes away victors tonight, 55-52, our final score. Jeff Vitelli, heck of a ball game. What a way to cap off yeah. our coverage here on Chippewa Valley Cable. Yeah, I mean, your heart breaks for the Cougars. You, you know, you had a 16-point halftime lead. You know, you played tremendous here in the first half, could do no wrong. And then, uh, you know, just, just like that, um, the Gross Point North Norsemen come roaring back get the game in overtime, win the ball. Like, you know, they showed you why they're one of the top five teams in the state. I mean, those those kind of teams just don't don't falter, don't wither, and and, and it showed you why. And they showed you why they're the MAC Red Division champions also. A little taste of March Madness. Wow, that was unbelievable. That was, a, that was a heck of a ball game by two fine, fine basketball programs. Once again, Gross Point North 55, the Dakota Cougars 52, our final score here tonight. Gross Point North advances to the regional finals to take on Cast Tech. Thank you so much for watching this Chippewa Valley Cable television production. For my broadcast partner, Jeff Vitale, Brad Fetter saying so long from Dakota High School. We'll see you next time right here on Chippewa Valley Cable.